folks. Good morning. What's popping? All right. Not we got Marv and Alice and the Henry. Good morning. Good morning. Carol and Dorothy. Uh, there's a phone there, and I don't know who the phone is. The Garcia's, there's a couple of phones. James and Marisol, Melissa, Mona, Nick, Stephanie. How you guys all doing? Good. Good morning. Good morning. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. Can, can you believe, man, July is over? Yeah, man. Crazy. Good morning. Like the summer just zipped by. Good morning. It's Crystal. Hey, Crystal. Okay, so so today I, I want to encourage and exhort uh, you guys and um, give you some tools and just some exhortation on how do we pray to get results? How do we pray to get results? When you think about praying, what's the one thing that comes to, to your mind when you think about praying? What do you mean by that question? When you think about praying, what comes to your mind? Communication and getting answers. Worship. Worship. Giving thanks. thanks. Mm. So looking for answers. Looking, looking for, for answers. answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I pray to feel like somebody's actually there to listen all the time. Ah. That's good. There was a there was a sister who when we got when I got when I got uh, first came into came into the kingdom. <clears throat> there's a group of us that came out of the same kind of similar backgrounds, and there's one sister. Her name was Marlene Owens, and uh, Marlene was a trip man, but she was a prayer warrior. I mean, she she grasped on to the power of prayer from the jump street. She used to always say this phrase. She used to always say, you don't want somebody praying for you that can't get a prayer through. You don't want them prayers to be bouncing off the ceilings because they can't get through. It was funny. And I hear her voice because um, she had this country twang when, when, when she would say it. And, you know, what I want to do today is just kind of give us some principles, right? This isn't an exhaustive teaching on prayer. This is just an attempt to provide some guidelines, if you will, for how do we pray to get results, right? Because the whole ideal is praying so that our hearts can be changed, so that God's will can kind of be done on the earth, right? It's to get results. It's not the exercise of prayer. We pray with the expectation of getting some results. So if you got your Bibles, let's let's go to James chapter five, verse, verse 16. This is just kind of a positional text here. James chapter five, verse 16. Yeah, much of what we're going to look at today, this stuff isn't new to you. I just want to encourage you. Not a lot of revelation today. It's just um, confirmation and encouragement in the truth that we already know. James chapter 5, verse, verse 16. If someone wouldn't mind, please, please read this for us. And, and you know me, read it, read, read it slow and purposeful. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Yeah. <clears throat> Love that scripture. Yeah. Prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. 
Who's got another translation? I think the King James says the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. Abi says makes much power available. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. King James is the fervent and effectual, the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous makes much power available. This word here for um, the word that's translated in my, I'm using the NLT, it's, 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 it's uh, powerful. Uh, should I should have put the King James up here. Um, for, for the King James version, it says that the fervent effectual prayer. When we think of fervent prayer, what do we generally think of? What would say a heartfelt prayer? Heartfelt? Purposeful. Purposeful? Fervent prayer. Like passionate, real passionate, intense. We did we generally think of it that way, right? Mm -hmm. I, I like purposeful. I like I like heartfelt. That 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 word fervent in the Greek is from the word of the, of the word, you know, I like I, I like word studies, right? It's it's from the word energio, right? Energio. When you look at that word, what does that word remind you of? What 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 other words? When we look at that Greek word, what other word comes to mind? Energio. I think a current, like a current, or a a frequency. That's good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's where we get our word energy. Energy. Yeah. You are, you are exactly right. It, it conveys the ideal of energizing. It's, it, it, it's the picture of an electrical current that brings energy to a circuit. When we apply it to the context of, of this verse, it, it, it kind of suggests a type of prayer uh, that, that, that Brenda alluded to that, that's passionate and heartfelt. Like, like the passionate, heartfelt prayer is, is what makes stuff happen. It, it's not speaking of emotionality, right? It's, it's not merely whipping up emotions, right? We've seen folks pray foaming at the mouth, hollering and yelling and screaming, right? Listen, when the spirit hits you, the spirit hits you. Don't, 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 don't misunderstand what, what, what I'm saying. But it's not the ideal that it is prayer that is emotionally driven. It's not about generating exciting words or sounds, but it's really a prayer that is energized, that is fueled, that is a current of intense, sincere confidence in God. It is a faith-fueled prayer that makes much power available. Not emotions, not passion as much as the passion of heart that comes from faith. So what I want to do today is kind of walk us through five principles that we can use to kind of frame, assess, evaluate uh, our ability or not so much our ability, but to evaluate whether or not we've been having success in our prayer life. Are we seeing results? And if we're not hitting on all five of these principles, and, and listen, they're, they're, these could be 15, 
But again, I'm just kind of narrowing down to a couple of basic principles and insights. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, we're going to talk about praying for results. And first thing I want to talk about is correct access. So what's important about prayer is being able to get access to God. So John 16, verse 23 to 24, John 16, verse 23 to 24, it's a prayer we, we, we all know, right? Again, all these verses are not new to us. John 16, 23 to 24 says, Jesus speaking to the disciples says, in that day, you will ask nothing of me. Most assuredly, I, I, I say to you, whatever you ask, of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. What is the criteria, the, 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 the key catalyst that Jesus is telling the disciples here that's the criteria for being able to have in answer to prayer or being able to pray in general to ask in his name in jesus name in his name yeah. see, see see the privilege of prayer is is really limited to those who are in christ all, all of us have heard people we've talked to people and i want to sound like the police here let me make sure, make sure i say this right we, we we've all heard and we've all talked to people everybody prays right you talk to people, yeah, man, I'm, yeah, I was praying. Yeah, even people who don't have a relationship with Christ, they think, yeah, I was praying. But the key point I want to make here is in order for us to pray in Jesus' name, we have to have a relationship with him. And it's that relationship that allows us to have access. I often talk to people who are not born again, but they say they pray to God. Well, I prayed and I asked God and no... If you don't have a relationship with God, what's what 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 I put it this way, what is the thing that ensures for you and I as believers that our prayers can get to God? Our faith. Faith. What else? What's the role that Jesus plays? The mediator. The mediator. Mediator. I need somebody to take my prayers into the heavenly, into the heavenly holy of holies before God. And if I don't have a relationship with Jesus, nobody's taking my prayers in. Doesn't matter how sincere I am, right? So, so when we talk about praying in Jesus' name, we're not just talking about... Um, putting his name at the end of what we say. And we all do that. I do that. It, 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 it becomes like a habit, right? And we end prayers and in Jesus' name. That's not what Jesus is saying when he says pray in his name. What he's meaning is praying in his righteousness because we have the ability to approach God. Our access to God is not contingent upon us, how good we are, how sincere our desires are. No, our access to God is contingent upon our relationship with the Father through Christ. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that righteousness is what gives us access. So when Jesus talks about praying in his name, he's not talking about, you know, using his name as a co-signer on a document at the end of our prayer in Jesus' name. I do it all the time out of habit. What he's really talking about is when I approach God, I'm approaching God with the mindset and the attitude that I have access and that my ability to have access is determined by my righteousness, anything within myself, apart from what Christ has provided for me, which is his righteousness. And that's the key that gives me access. And, and, and why is that important? Because when I'm praying in and through and out of the righteousness of Jesus, 
I have confidence that my prayers are going to be heard. And not only the confidence that my prayers are going to be heard, but the confidence to know that in Christ, all of the promises that God makes in Christ are yes and amen. Having the correct access, understanding how and why it is I can approach God, understanding that in Christ, all of God's promises that he makes to me are yes. That's not so much because of my faith, as but my faith is attached to the ideal that it's all because of Christ's righteousness. And my faith is in the righteousness of Christ and what that, that, what that provides for me. Because oftentimes we hesitate to approach God. Because I think sometimes we think that, well, we haven't performed good enough. We haven't checked all the boxes. So I don't really know if I can approach God. I don't really know. Right? But no, no, we don't approach in our righteousness. We approach in his righteousness. So praying for results involves having the correct access. And that's through the person and ministry and mediatory work of Christ, not, not in and of ourselves. The second thing about praying for results is I got to have the correct heart. I got to come with the right heart. Mark 11, verse 25 and 26. Someone read, someone read this for us, please. And, and when, when you stand praying, go ahead, Brenda, sorry. No, go ahead, finish, finish, Shayla, go ahead. And when you stand praying, forgive. If ye have aught against any, then your Father, also which is in heaven, may forgive your trespass. So tell me about my heart condition. If, <clears throat> I have, if I'm, if, if I'm going to have results in my prayer, what does this tell me about my heart condition? Forgive. Right. Forgive. Right. See, oftentimes we withhold forgiveness because we think it's doing something to the person we won't forgive. No, it's messing up our prayer. It's messing up our ability to get God's power, God's promises into my life. So Jesus says, listen, if I'm going to approach the Father, man, I got to make sure that my heart's right. I got to forgive my offenders. Second thing about having the right kind of heart, I got, I got to be willing to forgive. Here, here, here's a couple of other things. So, so Psalm 66, 18 and 19. Let me do this. I'm sorry. So... I got myself all twisted here. So, so the psalm says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Goes on to say, I prayed to the Lord and I praised him. If my thoughts had been sinful, he would have refused to hear me. But God did listen and he answered my prayers. If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. So what is this? What are these verses that I had backwards? <laughs> what do these verses tell, tell me additionally about the attitude of my heart, having a correct heart as a basis for getting results in prayer? God is not listening if your heart is not right. Yeah, and, and particularly, what about my heart not being right? Confessing your sins and forgiving. My stuff. Right. My stuff. So, so you, know, you know, Dave, real quick, even if you think about this, this is why 
oftentimes the enemy will have us to have offenses and, and people to offend us or come at us or this right here is life changing, man. If you think about it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, you had a thought. Oh, that, that's a good input. No, that's good input. I mean, because, man, I mean, we can all go sit here and think about people that have done us wrong or people that have hurt us. And this right here, man, if you don't, if you don't just forgive, it can hinder your prayer. Man. Can you pray? And here's the crazy thing. And man, I don't want to sound like the police here. Man. Like, if you're an individual to the point you made, if you're an individual that's always offended, always offended i i know that a person who's always constantly offended always holding an offense i know they don't have a prayer life. come on and i know that sounds judgmental and that sounds harsh and that 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 sounds like that, that that's that's not how we talk as christians today because we want anybody to feel comfortable with where they are but if you're always offended then god has to be lying when he says that if you don't forgive people i'm not going to hear you if you don't confess your sin, I'm not going to hear you. Is there anything in the New Testament around confessing our sin that God speaks to? Mm -hmm. Let me get the address for it. First uh, John. I think it's one, one, that if we confess our sins, that he's faithful and just. That's it. Yep. Just full enough to. Yep. That's it. That's it. That's the, that's, that, that's the one. Go with Melissa. So, so this ideal, this ideal that I've got to understand how I approach God and what's the basis of my ability to approach God. It's my relationship with Christ. That gives me access, right? If I don't have a relationship with Christ, I'm not saved, I'm not born again, I'm just religious. I really don't have access to God. I can say all the words I want. I can think I'm praying. I can say I'm praying. But if I'm not saved, I'm not praying because I don't have access. So to get results in prayer, I have to have access, the right kind of access. That's through Christ. I pray in his righteousness, not just in his name, using his name end of the prayer, but I'm praying in his righteousness, the righteousness that's been afforded to me by faith, and that's what gives me access, because he's mediating for me at the right hand of the Father, taking my prayers and bringing them into the Holy of Holies. And then my heart's got to be right. I have to be, I have to forgive people who wounded me, who hurt me, and your anger and your offense may be legitimate. Folks may have dogged you and done you wrong. Yes. But God says, listen, if I'm going to approach in prayer, man, I got to give that stuff up. Why do you think that is? Why do you think God says, listen, if you won't forgive other people, I'm, I'm not going to hear what you got to say. Because, because he's a loving all. us. He's forgiven us. Yeah, yep. He forgave us. Forgive it up. That's God, yes. And think about this. Think about all the stuff God's forgiven us for. Come on about it <laughs> and you know i'm sorry pastor but you know it, he's also loving because you can forgive and not love that person do you know what i mean so you you got to be loving in your forgiveness your, your forgiveness can't just be I'm, I'm doing it because if i don't do it god won't do it for me you know what I mean? No, no. Because you could easily say that and not really love that person truly after forgiving that person. That's not forgiveness. For the, forgiveness, ain't forgiveness. Forgiveness isn't words. Come on. Right. Come on. Forgiveness, right. Forgiveness is the releasing of an offense. Come on. Right. It's right. Releasing of an offense. Because you can say you forgive that person, but then every time you see them, they Come on. your last nerve just don't. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, exactly. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you ain't forgave that person because you haven't released the offense. Be because here spiritually, then there's something in my heart. This is about the stuff that's in my heart. The fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous, fervent, mm -hmm. energy, energy, current, 
right? It blocks the energy, the faith in my heart from connecting with God when I have unconfessed sin and I have unforgiveness. Mm. And all God says is, forgive them the same way I forgave you, mm. completely. And then, as Melissa said, he says, listen, if you sin, guess what? Come on and confess that. Mm -hmm. When you mess up, look up, fess up, and keep getting up. Come on. Right? But when we don't, this is what makes approaching God in prayer so difficult. So if we find ourselves having difficulty in getting with God and praying, and you don't feel it, you're saying words and it's just words and you don't feel it, you don't feel because that current isn't flowing out of your heart, then it's, then it's an opportunity to evaluate myself. Man, do I, do I got any unforgiveness in my heart? Because mm -hmm. all you got to do is deal with people and you're going to get offended. Come on, come on, jeez. <laughs> is deal with somebody other than yourself and there's an opportunity for offense. Do I have unconfessed sin? Good. Is there stuff in my life that I'm not being honest with myself and honest with God about? Not just the big super Walmart sins. These things, in, these things limit our ability to get results in prayer. The third thing for us to think about in terms of how do we pray for results? My access, my heart, and then thirdly, my motives. I gotta have the correct motives. James 4, 3, James 4, 3, and then we'll also look at Psalm 37, 4, James 4, 3. Someone, someone wanna read that for us, please? It says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So, so this is what James is saying. So, so, so take a look at that and, and let's put that in some, some modern, simple language. What, what is James saying to us? You're asking for the wrong reasons. Wrong reasons. And, and how it's all about you. Yep, it's all about you. He defines the wrong reasons as it's about you. Come on. Think how so much of our prayer list is about <laughs> us. Man. Change them, Lord, so I ain't got to deal with it. Change that, Lord, so I ain't got to deal with it. Right? It's about us. Boy, you in the house today, brother. <laughs> and God is saying, listen, you ask, you pray. You approach, but you don't, you don't receive. You don't get results because you're asking for the wrong reasons. <laughs> it's about us. That you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. In other words, it's all about you. All about me. Think about your prayer list. It's good. Think about what you ask for. Think about your motives. Look, look, at, look at the psalm. Talking about motives. Mm. Talks about a personal motive. You don't, you ask, but you don't receive. I love the way the King James says, because you ask. Ask a mess. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, the King James. <laughs> you ask a mess. Sometimes that King James just gives a better meaning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I tell you, you know, I, I don't like reading the King James today just because the cumbersomeness of the language, but all the Bible I have memorized in my heart and in my spirit is King James. <laughs> so, 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 so one, he says the wrong way about praying, the wrong kind of moments. And now in Psalm 37, 4, he says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Mm. King James says, delight thyself in the Lord. Now, 
there's been a lot of misunderstanding about this verse. When you look at that verse, um, and, and guys, feel free to kind of jump in here. When you look at this verse, on the surface, what does it appear to be saying? That he'll give you the desires of your heart. But now, you're mm -hmm, good. Now, what are those desires? That's the key, right? That's the key. Mm -hmm. Should be his desires. Yeah. Um, I, I've always viewed this verse from this lens. Because there are some that are saying, hey, if you if you delight, if you delight in God and you, you know, you know, you be about God and you pursue God and you make God your focus, all the stuff that you want in life, God will give it to you. That's what I've heard in the past. Come on. But there's another way to look at this that's more consistent with the totality of scripture. Come on. It's as I delight myself in God, the things that my heart wants are going to come from him. Yeah. He will give you the desires of your heart. In other words, the desires that your heart has will come from him. Yeah. I won't desire the carnal things, the temporal things. I'll desire the things that come from him. I'll desire what he wants for my life. Yeah. I'll desire his goals, his objectives. I'll desire to want to deal with offenses the way he says deal with offenses. I'll desire to want to um, respond to the challenges in my life the way he says to respond to the challenges in my life. See, then my that, that's how I get the right motives. See, if, if God's not my delight, then my prayers will be centered on me. I'm pimping God. I hate to use that phrase. I do. I cause it, that sounds oversimplistic. That that's too broad of a stroke. But I'm using God. I'm I'm using prayer to use God to get what I want, rather than using prayer so God can use me to get what He wants. Mm. That's the difference between these two verses. If I'm trying to use God to get what I want my prayers aren't going to be effective. If I'm trying to use God so that he can get from me what he wants, my prayers are going to be effective. If I delight in the Lord, he's going to give me the desires of my He'll give me the things in my heart that I desire. The Question, Dave. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and I like how you broke that down. Some people may ask, well, how do we really delight in the Lord? I know you just hit on a little bit, but. That's a good question. Somebody want to give some input on that? How do you delight in the Lord? I have a relationship spend, with him. Uh, okay. Spending yeah, time spend in his time word and loving him and obeying him and believing in his promises and trusting him. Yeah. And doing his will, correct? Right. It, it, think, think about the way that we delight in our natural human relationships. Mm -hmm. Brenda, you put it pretty. We spend time. People yeah. we delight in, we spend time with. We don't spend time with folks we don't delight in. Come on. <laughs> Just like, like, oh, Lord, I got to go over here and deal with these people. <laughs> I'm going to pop in, but it's only going to be for a minute. So yeah, it's 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 delighting in God is really about spending time. It's about intimacy, spending time, uh, fellowshipping with Him, just spending time with Him. Yeah, making Him making Him the priority of my heart, wanting. And, and Marv, that's a good question because that's a whole teaching in itself, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's 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 wanting. Here's, here's an old phrase that comes from, you know, those of us who've been Christians for a long time, we can, we can remember this phrase, right? It, 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 it's about seeking his face and not his hand. Mm -hmm. Come on. Right? Seeking his face, his presence, right? Just loving. You ever just spend time with God, just loving on God? Mm -hmm. 
put on your favorite worship music, whatever it is, whether, whether it's gospel, whether it's contemporary, whether it's hymns, whatever it is, that just creates an environment in your heart for you to just sing and just love on God. Come on. That's, that's delighting in the Lord. That's seeking his face and not just what he can give me and do for me. Yeah. Because think about our natural physical relationships. If we have natural physical relationships with someone, right? And you never want to spend, never, never wants to spend time with you. But always asking you for something. You'd be like, hey, come on, let's go hang out. Nah, I can't, can't, can't hang out. But then the next day, hey, I need something from you. Can you pick me up here again? You'd be like, wait a minute, hold on. What's wait? Ho, 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 ho. This, whoa, you just trying to use me. Sound like some of my kids. <laughs> 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 Adult kids, hold up. Think, I'm sorry, y'all. I, I think <laughs> that's a good example. Yeah. But that's that's kind of an in, 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 in example of what it means to kind of delight in the Lord. So so what we're talking about here is again getting results when we pray, not not just going through the motions, but getting God's will done in the earth, right? When Jesus was at, when the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. First thing Jesus said, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the real goal of prayer. Not to get what I want, is to get God's will manifested in the earth. Yeah. God will manifest it in my heart. God yeah. will manifest it in my life. That's the results of prayer. Getting God's will manifested and the way to do that is i got to recognize the correct access i got to have the correct i got to have the correct motives fourth thing i have to have the correct expectations when i pray the correct expectations when i pray why are expectations important in anything you do? What, what's the role that expectations play in anything that you do? It allows you to have, it allows you to feel that hope and know that this is going to happen because of me doing this. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Helps you to get results. Helps you get results. Faith. Much. Mark 11. Satisfaction. Satisfaction. Okay. That's a good one. Because like you go to your you go to your favorite restaurant, you go somewhere, you got these expectations. I've been thinking about this. I've had these expectations about this. Or you go to a movie or you go to a concert, you go to some event, and you have these expectations. It's an anticipation of a result. Yeah. Expectation is. It's an anticipation of a result, right? And, and if I have high expectations, I have a high anticipation of a result. If I go into a situation and I have no expectations whatsoever, like, I don't know what these, I don't know what these folks going to do. I, listen, I don't need, I, listen, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going. I don't know what to expect. I ain't got no expectations, right? We can't approach God that way. Come on. We have to approach God with a high expectation. This is what Jesus was talking to in Mark eleven twenty four. And again, this this in and of itself is a whole lesson. So we're just we're just trying to give some 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 guidelines, some some foundational principles for us. Jesus says, "Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, what is what is the thing He instructs us to do?" For whatever we ask him for. Got to believe. You gotta have believe, expectations. Right. I got to have an expectation. I got to have an expectation. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Here's a quote I found. And I love this. Mm. I love this quote. It says, when it comes to praying in faith, most of us pray for rain, but do not carry our umbrellas. Just let that 
for a moment. I don't know if it do you like it did me when I saw it, but just, just let that sit for a moment. When it comes to praying in faith, most of us pray for rain, but do not carry our umbrellas. So there's no expectation. We pray for rain, but we don't have an expectation that rain's going to come, so we don't bring the umbrella. Mm. See, this is what praying in faith is. Yeah. In faith is praying with the expectation that I'm going to receive. Yeah. It's praying with the expectation that I'm going to receive. It's not praying in doubt. Get John 15, 7. Someone read that for us, please. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Now, go back here and I want to clarify something here. I got my pages messed up here, guys. I apologize. So, so, so here's the deal. This verse, I think, has been another one of those verses like the light yourself from the Lord. Mm -hmm. That this verse here um, has been one of the most abused verses when it comes to prayer and faith. Because if I read this by itself, without any other supportive scripture, just by itself, alone, what does this verse tell me? I believe I'm gonna receive it. Yep. And we came out of that, we came out of those environments, right? Yes, we did, yes, we did. Name it and claim it. Come on. If you, if, if, listen, if you got enough faith and you believe, you can receive, no matter what it is, yeah. And then oftentimes that faith has that that faith is directed towards temporal, carnal, materialistic things, right? More so than the transformation of my heart and my spirit that I might become more conformed to the image and likeness of Christ, which is true Christian maturity. What Jesus is really speaking here is is he, he's 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 coming out of the the, the engagement with the fig tree. And, and Jesus cursed the fig tree because the fig tree didn't have fruit. Yeah. Right? So the issue for Jesus was fruit. The imagery in the text is fruit. Right? And his desire to have fruit out of our lives. And then when the disciples came back and they saw the fig tree that it was withered, just like Jesus said it was, that's when he says, listen, it's, it's like, Master Man, how did you do that? And then Jesus really is talking about faith and expectations. Yeah. I have to have an expectation when I pray. Because faith is an expectation. Faith is more than an expectation. Actually. Because if we look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it is the evidence of things not yet seen. And in the original language, that word substance means it's the title deed. So when you have a title deed to something, what does that title deed declare to you and to others? That you have ownership. You have ownership. So faith is the title deed of what I hope for. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more than just, man, I hope it goes right. We going over here for dinner, man. I hope the food is good. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. Oh, man, I hope something good comes out. It's a certainty of expectation. I know because I got the title deed to this thing. And Jesus is saying, whatever you and I are going to pray for, we have to believe that we've received it because that's what faith is. It's, it's knowing that I have a title deed to what I'm asking for, right? I don't have a title deed that guarantees me a new car. Mm -hmm. I don't title deed that guarantees me a new house. I don't have a title deed that guaranteed me that I would have won the $1.2 billion uh, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so it's about expectations 
but it's also about alignment, about having the right alignment when I pray. So what do I mean by alignment? That's John 15, 7. Jesus says, if you abide in me, right, that's delighting myself in the Lord. And my words abide in you. Think about this now. If you abide in me, if you abide in me, abide to take up residence, to dwell. I like to think of it as, think of it as marinating something. What happens when you, when you marinate some chicken breast in some uh, Italian salad dressing? All the flavor will seep right into it. OMG. And think about this. The longer you let sit, chicken sit <laughs> what happens? The more it consumes. The more <laughs> it takes on yeah. what it is abiding in. That's the picture of abiding. So Jesus is saying, you keep, keep, keep that marinated meat in your mind. Jesus is saying, if you marinate yourself in me, and my words marinate in you, watch this. You can ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Why do you think the ability to ask for whatever I wish for and the certainty of it will be done for you, why is there such a certainty of statement that Jesus is making in connection with abiding in him and his words abiding in us? Because you, you wish him for his word. You yeah. that word. It got, mm -hmm. Isn't that relationship too? Relationship. You, you an intimate relationship. And with that, he feels like if you could take your time out for me and just spend all your time and don't allow anything in life and all these things that's in your heart and the 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 the, the, the what is that saying? The the issues of life. Yeah. If you allow me to take care of that, as you read in my word, you won't get it. It ain't, it ain't nothing you can't get from me. And but you're still going to have trials, troubles, and tribulations. But abiding in my word and allowing me to take care of you, you get past that too. That's where the peace. Now, oh, my goodness. Now, hey. watch now watch this. Because that that you laid it out, Brenda. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Look at the text. He said to me and my words. Yeah, now watch, watch. What he's showing us is the whatever I wish mm -hmm. be shaped. Come on. Abiding. Come on. See, I can't abide in him and have his words abiding in me and be asking for craziness. <laughs> I can't do that. And, and, and then be doing what James said, asking with wrong motives. Ask it amiss. Asking amiss. Not if I am abiding in him. Yeah. If his words are in me. In other words, his words are transforming what my heart desires. It's good. It's transforming what my heart desires. And the things that I'm wishing for are things that my relationship with him and the power of his word in my heart has transformed and generated. So that what I'm asking for, I'm asking for stuff that's according to his will. Will, yeah. I was just going to ask that. Where does, like, I feel like if it is your will should be in there too. Yeah, watch this. No, you're right. Watch this. You are so perceptive, Marisol. So, so, so read 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Gosh, I don't have my glasses. Okay, I'll try. 
<laughs> That's now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have to ask of him. So you're perfectly right in your in that unction, right, about his will. See, see, all this stuff comes together. So if, if we want to be effective in praying, if we want prayers that get results, ultimately we have to understand that it's about access, right? It begins with how do I approach God? Do I even have access to God? Because again, a lot of people say they pray, but they don't have a relationship with the Lord. They don't confess Jesus as Savior, but they say they pray to God all the time. It's about- That's why we should ask everybody for prayer. Yeah, good point. <laughs> It's, 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 about, it's about our heart condition, right? Do I have unforgiveness in my heart? Am I, am I, do I have unconfessed sin in my heart? It's about my motives. Are my motives right? Is it about me? Or am I allowing God to shape my motives? It's about expectations. It's about knowing that if I ask, I can have a faith expectation that it's going to be answered. Jesus said, listen, if you believe it, when you ask, believe you received it, and you will. But there's a criteria for that. It has to be according to God's will. It's the net result of me abiding with him and his word abiding in me. That formulates and shapes what I ask of the Father. And then notice the word that John uses in the beginning of this text. There's a word that's, that's, that's akin to expectations and faith. Hmm. It's like confidence. Confidence. This is the confidence that we have in him. This is the expectation of faith that we have. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Yeah. Because we got access. Come on. Because the mo because the mo uh, our heart is right. I've confessed my sin. I've forgiven individuals. I'm not holding grudges. My motives are right. I'm not asking for me. It ain't about me. I'm not asking a miss that I might consume it upon my own lust. I've got the right expectations that what I'm asking for, I'm going to receive. And then I have the right alignment. And the alignment is the thing that I'm asking for. I believe I'm going to receive if I ask, but I'm making sure that what I'm asking is aligned with his will. Because I'm abiding with him and his word is abiding in me. This is how you and I are able to have prayer that gets results. Yeah, forget about, forget about, I, I got approach up there. I took approach out. I took that section out because I thought it was redundant. Um, but it's about access, it's about the heart, it's about motives, it's about expectations, and it's about alignment. Any one of these can throw us off. I can have the right heart, right? Ain't got any grudges, I, you know, I'm not holding a fence against anybody. I'm confessing my sin before God, but my prayers aren't in alignment. I can have the right expectations, but they're not based on the right thing. So any thoughts or comments about this? And then, then, then I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give us some practical examples on how can we make sure that our prayers are in alignment 
so that we can have that expectation, that confidence of faith in what we ask for. All right, let me give you a couple of practical examples and then we'll close out, all right? So what, one, one of, and listen, I'm, 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 I, get, I just feel the need to be honest about this. Um, I'm not the prayer warrior in my house. My wife is the prayer warrior. My wife prays without ceasing. Um, she could probably teach this a lot better a lot better than me. So we, we said that the, that the alignment piece is key. I can do all the other things, but if, but if I'm not asking according to his will, now I'm out of alignment. And he has no duty and no obligation to do something for me that's outside of his will, right? And again, this is broad, and I know there's a lot of micro subsets in this, but I'm just I'm just being broad, right? Because you know you could be thinking, so so does it mean that I, I shouldn't I shouldn't ask God, you know, to help my child in school, you know, to be a good student, or if they got a test coming up? No, that's not what I'm saying. That 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 that's that's not what I'm, what I'm saying. I'm just trying to be broad. Um, so. I, what are the practical examples of this? So here's, here's Ephesians chapter one, verse 16 and 17. Um, and we'll read from 16, 17, 18, and 19. Uh, this is a verse that speaks to something that's specific about God's will for our lives as a believer, right? This is God's will. So Paul starts out and he says, for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks. Uh, for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And this is what Paul was praying for the Ephesian church. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his call. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? This is God's will. When you look at this verse, this is God's will for you. People all, you know, people um, um, out of right motive and right desire are always creating. I just want to know what God wants me to do. I just want to know what God's will for my life is. Well, right here. Right here, he tells us. God wants to give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowing and understanding him, right? God, God wants us to have um, enlightened spiritual eyes. He wants us to be able to know the hope of our calling. He wants us to understand the richness of our inheritance in him. And he wants us to know and understand the power that's made available to us. That's will for us. Now, how do I take this and turn this into a prayer? Because if I pray something according to his will, I know he hears me and I know I got the petition that he asked. That's how I get results. I get results by making sure my stuff is aligned to his will, not just my will. So this is just an example of a prayer that I, I, I threw together, right? Someone read that for us. Father, I ask that your spirit would release wisdom and revelation amongst us so that I may know you better. I ask that the eyes of my heart will be enlightened so that I would know the hope to which you called me and the riches of my inheritance in Christ, as well as exceedingly great power that is available for all who believe. Amen. See, that's a Amen. it's simple, but it's powerful because I'm praying what we just read in Ephesians 16 through 19 is God's will for me as a believer. And if I pray this fervently, in other words, if I pray this with a 
expectation of faith. If, 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 if I take Ephesians 16 through 19 and I read this verse and I meditate on this verse and I start to memorize this verse and I study these verses. And while I'm at work, as I have free time, I'm thinking, I'm turning them over in my mind. And I take this, I take this prayer template here and I start praying that back to God. As I'm falling asleep at night, instead of falling asleep watching TV, I'm falling asleep and I'm meditating on this promise, this thing that God says that he wants me to know and understand. And I'm giving this thing back to God. I'm repeating God's words back to him. I'm turning it into a prayer and I am petitioning of the father for his will to be manifested in my life. Would this be manifested in my life? Yes or no? Yeah. Yep. This is how we pray to get results. We make sure our heart is right, but we make sure we're praying for the things that we know are the will of God for us. We'll pray for things, our kids to get good grades in school and, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. We'll pray for those things, but we won't pray for the things in the word that God tells us is his will for us. I, I use this, we pray circumstantially. Whatever the circumstances are around us, our prayer is in response to those. That's not completely wrong, but there's no proactiveness of that. There's no fervency in that. Here's what I mean. There's no expectation attached to what God has already made known to me about his will for me. And now I'm using prayer as a tool that his will, which is in heaven, revealed to us by the revelation of his word, that that now become manifested, not just in the earth, but it has to be in my heart before it can be in the earth. Here's another example. Philippians 4, 6, 7. We all know this verse, right? Someone read this for us, please. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving present, present your request to God. Present your, I'm sorry, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's an awesome promise from God, right? What's the promise he makes for us in this verse? What's the promise and what's his will? He will give us all understanding and will guard our hearts and mind. He will give us peace. Yep. Any, anyone else? Any, anything else to add? I think someone else is about to say something. Yeah, it, it's a promise of peace. It's a promise of peace contingent upon something. What's that promise of peace contingent on? Us not being anxious, but to be prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Yeah, I always remember Keith Reed. He, he's Dr. Keith Reed now. I knew him when he was just Keith Reed back in the day. And I always remember his teaching on this verse. And, 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 and he gave a picture, you know, of sitting around the table, how, how when you sit around the table and you have a family meal and all the food and stuff's on the table and I pass you some mashed potatoes and you pass me the gravy and I pass you the meat and you pass me the green beans, right? And I always remember his analogy of sitting around the table with God and I pass God my problems, he passes me the peace, right? So that's God's promise, right? And it's contingent upon me bringing my anxieties, my stresses, the phrase Brenda used, the issues of life that weigh on me, bringing those to him. I can't expect to receive the peace, right, if I don't pass the problems. So 
How do we turn this into a prayer that can get results? Because again, if I ask anything according to his will, I know this, he hears me. And if he hears me, I got what I've asked for. As long as I'm accessing through the righteousness of Christ, long as my heart is right, long as my motives are right, as long as I have the right expectation, my alignment can guarantee results in prayer. So this is just turning this, this promise into a prayer. Someone read that for us, please. Father, I come to you regarding the worries and fears that concern my heart. I offer my praise and, and gratitude to you as well as my fears. Take these things from me and in return, I receive your indiscretible peace that guards my heart and mind. See, we, we think prayer is a bunch of like magic words and we, you know, and we, and we gotta like, like put all this into it and be foaming at the mouth. No, no. Here's a promise. Give me your, give me your problems. I'm going to give you some peace. That's a promise. A prayer that gets results when it comes to the issues of life that weigh on me. Father, I come to you regarding the worries and fix. God, I come to you regarding this person and that situation and this and that, whatever it is. And I give it to him. And imagine what happens if we take this promise in Philippians 4, 6, 7. Because remember, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, and I meditate on this thing. I, I, maybe we'll do some teaching on this to get more granular. I write it out. I meditate on it. I think about this thing. I memorize this scripture. I quote it to myself as I'm going to bed. Then I formulate my prayer. Maybe I use this. Maybe I use my own prayer that I formulate. But it's centered around God's will. And I start offering that up. And I start giving that up to God. Here's a question. Will that promise be manifested in my life? Absolutely it will. Because if I ask anything according to his will, I have confidence that he hears me. And if he hears me, I have the expectation. I have the thing I've asked for. When you stand praying, believe that you've received it. I believe that when I pray and I give God my problems, I believe that I'm going to receive his peace. I believe that. Not because I got this super hyper faith, but I believe that God is not a man that he should lie to. Whatever he's promised to do, he's able to do. I believe it because I have access to the Father. Because Jesus is taking my prayers and he's mediating for me on the right hand of God. And I'm making sure that my heart and my motives are right. This is how we get access. This is how we get results in prayer. So... Here's a guideline for us, guys. We'll close out with this. Here's a guideline for us to be thinking about. Ask God for wisdom and direction. What, what, what do I need of your will in my life that I'm missing right now? Lord, I got so many areas that I, I sense need to be corrected. Lord, where do I begin? Then, then claim a promise or exhortation. From the scriptures. And then locate them in that promise book. I keep coming back to that promise book. And you can find a promise book. You find them on Amazon. They're like three, four bucks. If that. I think they'll ship to you. They keep a ton of them. They'll ship to you overnight, basically. Read and meditate on the scripture. 
that you find in that promise book. Write the verse into a prayer. And then pray this back to God with confidence and an expectation, because that's what faith is. Faith in your faith. It's confidence and expectation that if I ask anything according to his will, he's going to do it because he's not a man that he should lie. My confidence and my faith isn't in my faith. It's in him. Any questions, comments about this, this basic guideline? I'm glad that you shared that prayer. Um, is it okay if I share mine? Absolutely. So um, I do the same that, that you did too. Um, I stick with Proverbs 3, 5, 6, um, but mine reads as this. Father, I'm coming to you in Jesus' name. And Lord, that means that I have the authority, the assurance you said that if I have come in the name of Jesus, you enter my prayers. And I'm coming in submission to your will. And, and I know that whatever I'm asking for, you're going to do the best for me, the right things for me. You're giving me the best things that I need, exactly what I desire, the first, your, the first, I mean, that fits your perfect will for my life. And I pray, and I pray you, and, and I thank you. I pray to you, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening to my prayers. And then, um, uh, and, th and that's really it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Yeah. See, that's being intentional and purposeful. Marvin, Marvin always used the phrase, uh, um, uh, what's that phrase you use, Marvin? You got to work the word? Yes, sir. We got to work it. It's how we work it. It ain't just sitting and hearing me talk about it. It's working it. Working it. So, so again, I'll send this out. And you can look. You can look at these guidelines and stuff. But it's it's really getting more practical than mystical about prayer. Because I think oftentimes prayer is mystical. Right? It's mystical. It's spiritual. I think it's more practical than it is spiritual. Right? Mm -hmm. It's approaching God. Um, based upon the terms of our covenant and having, having an expectation of faith that the things that he articulates that are the will for my life, he wants them in my life. And if my heart aligns with that, then it can be manifested in my life. So I want to talk to you about um, um, some just resources and support. Does anybody remember uh, when you first learned to ride a bike? right? You first learned to ride a bike, you use training wheels. I remember back in the day, that was a big thing for us, training wheels. And um, training wheels helped you to kind of keep your balance until you learned to ride on your own, right? Wasn't no shame in training wheels when you were young trying to learn to ride a bike. Well, you've heard me talk about these tools often, and I want you to think of them as spiritual training wheels for you. I have four volumes of prayers that avail much. And I use them. I use the spiritual templates that are in them for prayer. And then, then you have God's uh, praying God's promises. There's a ton of books out there that contain God's promises. And it's finding the promise of God because the promise of God is his will for your life. It's his will in every circumstance and in every situation. So, and speaking about your kid in school, them, them, them doing well academically or, or there's a test coming up in front of them. God has all kinds of promises about his purpose and plans for our children, right? That we're to train our children up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. That, that, that like arrows in the hands of a mighty warrior, so are children in the days of our youth. The blesses the man whose quiver is full, right? Arrows, what we shoot. You shoot an arrow. We shoot our kids out into the world. And God has a plan and purpose for them. And he wants them to be successful. And I find 
scriptures related to God's purpose and plan. And I turned them into prayer. I turned them into a current, a conduit of spiritual power into my life. And for those of us who aren't as seasoned and experienced with the Lord or in prayer, hey, no shame in using training wheels. So I'd encourage everybody, if you don't have these resources, make an investment in yourself. All right. That's all I have from an ex.